Personal memories of life on the prairies inspire the artist to share an intimate knowledge of a way of life that for many has substantially changed over the course of the last two centuries. Avid attention to detail serves this purpose well. Hazel Litgus's Canning Peaches takes a high vantage point to show the entire process, from cutting and boiling the fruit to sealing and storing the peaches in an underground cellar. Cree painter Alan Sapp's atmospheric sharpening willow pickets stems from his own memory of life on the Red Pheasant First Nation in Saskatchewan. Raised by his grandparents on the family farm, he worked full-time after age 12. His grandmother taught him the Cree ways and encouraged his passion for drawing and painting. He later painted commissions and sold his paintings in North Battleford. His art career bloomed after he began to create from his personal experience. Other vernacular artists reconstruct a prairie past that can be called memoria. Memoria is distinct from memory in the psychological sense. It is based on oral and written histories, stories, or imagination. An example is Henry Beaudry's envisioning of the 1876 treaty signing, Treaty No. 6, Battleford area, and Willard Trimble's New Settler for Red Deer, as well as Irene McCofferty's 1895 Northwest Mounted Police Tracking Horse Thieves. Guyana artist Percy Two Gun Plainwoman's The Last Buffalo Hunt connects hauntingly across five decades with Siksika Nation artist Adrian Stimson's Bison Abstract II, in which he renders a single bison in a heavy and stark black and white palette to evoke ideas of cultural fragility, resilience, and nostalgia. Percy Two Gun Plain Woman was born in 1895 and was raised on the Guyana Blood Reserve near Standoff, Alberta. He left residential school after grade seven to work as a cowpuncher, becoming an expert rider and bronchbuster who worked rodeos throughout the West. At nearly 50, he began to take a serious interest in art, taking lessons at the Banff School of Fine Art and painting traditional designs on teepees prior to his portraiture practice. Born in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Adrian Stimson moved to Alberta's Siksika Nation at age 10. He studied fine arts at the Alberta College of Art and Design and completed his Master in Fine Arts at the University of Saskatchewan, where he taught as well. After eight years as tribal counselor for the Siksika Nation and a term as the president of the First Nations Confederacy of Cultural Education Centers, Adrian sought refuge in art creation. A disruptive artist in multiple disciplines, he wields painting, theater, installation, photography, sculpture, curation, education, and activism to resurrect First Nations histories. With memory as her vehicle, the changes brought by time drive Anne Harbaz's Ten Weddings, in which she simultaneously depicts multiple family weddings that took place over a span of 40 years and many miles, omniscently showing children and grandchildren moving from their Ukrainian rural communities into urban environments. In Irene McCofferty's Progress Parade of Time, streams of time interweave with dog-drawn travois, leading covered wagons and semi-trailers while trains and jets fly over a dense landscape of forested mountains juxtaposed with pump jacks, grain elevators, and skyscrapers. The memories that inspire the work of prairie-based artists may be unexpectedly bleak, focusing on the issues and struggles of their communities. George Tozak tackles racism, drunk driving, and environmental catastrophe in Canada 1949 Racism in Alberta during the 40s, Mother's Day, Toby's death by a drunk driver in 42, 
and my desperate roots, I lived here in the 1930s. Alan Benjamin Clark evokes the personal and cultural trauma of church-controlled residential schools in Mother Superior and Sins of the Father. Many artists whose practices are rooted in a prairie vernacular also hold tightly onto positive memories, creating work that reminds them of happy moments from their life. Lives that were at times coping with difficult circumstances, such as periods of isolation, poverty, loneliness, or illness. William Panko emigrated from Austria in 1911. He worked as a farm laborer in the summer and a miner and drumheller in the winter. In 1937, he fell ill with tuberculosis and spent 10 years at the Baker Memorial Sanatorium in Calgary before he passed in 1948. This is where he discovered his love of painting, and with the support of Marion Nichol, he painted many watercolors, which brought back happy memories of his home life and garden in Drumheller. William Panko's Happy Cabbages, Marianne Gopal Krishna's Apple Harvest, and Joe Fafard's Ford from his Pent series, amongst many others, show that the artist's memories provide a joyful wellspring for work that celebrates prairie ways, life, and communities. Learn more about the other themes in the exhibition in the rest of the AGSM Art Connects video series, which brings you up close and personal to works of art as you meet artists from the prairies. Thank you.